What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. Welcome to our daily show where we discuss the fourth stimulus check update, stimulus package update, daily news, pretty much everything you need to know about on a daily basis, money, investing, the stock market. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. I will keep you up to date with everything going on here in our country. Remember, new videos come out here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you haven't subscribed yet down below, make sure to subscribe down. <laughs> make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on new videos. It's free to do so, and I will keep you up to date. Don't forget to hit the like button for us down below if you find these videos helpful, where I'm going to let you guys know about a new push coming here for new stimulus checks to be added and what is going on here in our country, including one state that is pushing to make indoor masking permanent. And the question is, will more states do this with the new Omicron virus variant now in at least 12 states? Will we see more states pushing to make indoor masking permanent? Yeah, check this out. That rule will expire unless we adopt it formally. Masks have become the new normal for Oregonians. However, the indoor mandate will expire soon unless the state makes the rule permanent. That's something being considered right now. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. I'm Deborah Knapp. And I'm Kelly Ozier. We know that this sounds alarming, so we're on your side, breaking down what exactly is going on. K2's Genevieve Realm is live in southeast Portland. Genevieve, OHA held a meeting today to discuss this. Yeah, Kelly, and this is all about masking. The state recently dropped its outdoor mask mandate, but there is a process going on right now that would potentially make the indoor mask mandate a rule indefinitely. OHA met with a committee today, and that committee's role is to provide feedback on the rules in place, what should and shouldn't be included, and the impact those rules will have on the public. We've been dealing with masks for about a year and a half, and in Oregon, it's looking like the indoor mask mandate will be here for a while longer. On Thursday, OHA convened a Rules Advisory Committee, or RAC, to discuss the future of masking in the state. Can you explain a little bit about what that RAC is? Sure. Um, we have a temporary rule in place that requires masking in indoor public places and in transportation hubs and so on. Uh, that rule will expire unless we adopt it formally. Considering the COVID situation, OHA is looking to make the indoor mask rule permanent. Permanent, a you know, that might scare a lot of people. That might, they might think, oh my gosh, are we going to be masking for forever? What does a permanent ruling do? Why not just extend right. the temporary rule? Permanent, permanent means indefinitely. It doesn't necessarily mean permanent. We could repeal it as well. Um, but we are only allowed to have a temporary rule for 180 days. And if anything that goes beyond 180 days, we cannot extend it temporarily. It's either, you know, adopt it formally or, or let it go. Now, so here's the deal. This committee, this committee only meets one. That meeting wrapped up at four o'clock. When OHA proposes the rule formally, that is when the public will get a say. There will be time for public comment and a public hearing. Those are still to be determined as to when they'll happen. Yeah, so the state of Oregon is working to put indoor masking place in place indefinitely. Yeah. Let me know your thoughts on this. Are you for this? Are you against this? Of course, they could change this in the future based on what you heard there. Um, but yeah, the question is, is this is just one state, but could this spread to more states? Could this spread to your state if you're in a different state? And now with this new virus variant, Omicron now here in at least 12 different states here in the United States and spreading very quickly Will we see the return of mask mandates and possibly even more travel restrictions, maybe even lockdowns or shutdowns? Will we see this happen again here in the United States? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Do you think this needs to happen? Of course, I'm sure we'll have a lot of varying different opinions. But uh, yeah, it's just, uh, this type of stuff is... Uh, at least partially starting to happen with at least mask mandates and at least travel bans here, at least coming from at least uh, seven or eight different countries from South Africa coming back to the United States uh, for non-citizens are not allowed to come back to the United States. And the question is, what will happen here going forward in the United States?
Yeah. We also have the push for more stimulus as, of course, the um, the next stimulus package, the Build Back Better package, was passed in the House, is now in the Senate, but is going to be reworked a lot in the Senate. The, Sen the Senate is expected to change the pa package here significantly. And the push for a stimulus checks for adults, in addition to the monthly checks that are in there for children called the child tax credits, $250 to $300 per month, those are really in jeopardy as well as the last monthly checks for children called the child tax credits are set to go out on December 15th, which is now 10 days away. That's the last monthly check because if they don't pass this package by then or by the next month, really, per se, January 15th, which would be theoretically the next monthly check that would go out there won't be another monthly check for children, 65 million children, the child tax credit. Remember, they want to extend that monthly check uh, called the child tax credit for one more year. But if they don't pass this next package, the Build Back Better package, there won't be another check. Remember that there is also, um, you're going to get six months, the first six months of those child tax credit payments um, first six months, you didn't receive those because they didn't start the monthly checks until July. You will receive those first six months on your 2021 tax return when you file that in 2022. So that's fifteen to eighteen hundred dollars that you will receive next year in a one lump sum on your 2021 tax return that you'll file in 2022. I know that might get a little bit confusing, so keep that in mind. Also, any children you had born in 2021, you can claim the $1,400 stimulus check for the third stimulus check and the full $3,000 to $3,600 child tax credits as well. So keep that in mind as well. Claim that on your tax return. Talk to your tax accountant or your whoever files your tax return. But there's also a big push going on for additional stimulus checks, a fourth of stimulus checks on uh, for this next package for adults as well. Uh, yeah, you can see here cash demands push for $2,000 and $1,000 stimulus checks before Christmas as hard hit Americans demand New Year's payments. And yes, we are seeing a large push here from Americans to include a Christmas stimulus check before um, before the holidays. And um, we have seen a lot of push here, pushing our senators, pushing our congressmen to include a stimulus check, a fourth stimulus check here to be included in this package, one to $2,000 stimulus checks to be included in this stimulus package. You can see here, Americans desperate for economic stability are pleading for a one or $2,000 stimulus check ahead of Christmas and the new year on social media. As holiday shoppers put additional pressure on consumer, many have taken to Twitter to voice their dissatisfaction with the, la the lack of a fourth stimulus check, with even arguing for a recurring monthly payment. Quote, give people a fresh start, $2,000, then $1,000 for five months, they suggested. Quote, that's life-changing for low-income SSI and seniors, another person said. Quote, a different Twitter user uh, responded directly to a tweet from First Lady Jill Biden, which showed the White House's elaborate Christmas decor. It would help if people on SSI would get a fourth and a fifth $2,000, said the responder, who also wished the holidays were over due to economic stress. We need to pay rent, bills, and food like everyone else, lamented the user. Quote, where's our $2,000 stimulus checks we were promised, asked another user. Since the beginning of the pandemic, Three different stimulus packages were passed, but a lot of people are still in a lot of need. A lot of people still need a lot of help during this pandemic, which is obviously still raging on, and a new virus variant is threatening the country now. Nearly 3 million people have signed the petition demanding $2,000 stimulus checks. As you can see here, this petition from change.org is for $2,000 per month, 
is at 2.975 million signatures, almost at 3 million signatures. This is just one of the petitions out there. There's also a petition from the Senior Citizens League uh, that I believe is over a million signatures as well. Literally millions and millions of people have signed these petitions. That's a lot of people. This is actually one of the highest signed petitions I have ever seen. Remember, not even everybody even signs petitions. So this is a lot of people to say that millions of people have signed these petitions here. So, I mean, that's really saying something. Senator Bernie Sanders, who's fighting for several different things in this stimulus package, says, quote, is anyone in the United States Congress willing to tell me with a straight face that, quote, yeah, the American people enjoy paying some of the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs. Totally absurd. He says the cost of a Pomacort asthma inhaler in the UK is zero dollars. So it must be covered by the country. The cost in Canada is $33. The cost in the United Kingdom is $311. And I can confirm this because I have inhalers. I've had asthma since I was a teenager. And although my asthma is way, way better because now they have uh, steroids inside the inhalers and I really don't have to take it as an everyday thing, um, they're hundreds of dollars. And because the way my insurance works, uh, my insurance doesn't pay anything until I hit a $5,000 deductible. So I have to literally pay everything out of pocket until I hit $5,000, and then the insurance basically covers everything else. Bernie says, I'm sick and tired of the pharmaceutical industry continuing to rip off the American people. It is long past time to end their greed. That is one of the other things they want to do in the stimulus package is lower, dramatically lower, the cost of prescription drugs. Um, one of the things pretty much uh, lowering the cost of the vast majority of prescription drugs unless they've just come on the market recently, like um, pretty much anything that hasn't come on the market recently, like inhalers or um, insulin would be dramatically lower. The cost of insulin uh, would go down depending on which type you get, uh, could go down from $600 per month all the way down to $35 a month. Literally life-saving drugs like inhalers or insulin uh, imagine that. And honestly, oh, there's over 100, I think it's over 150 million Americans um, take prescriptions. So literally would be a cost savings for, like I said, over 100 million Americans. Meanwhile, uh, fighting the good fight to trying to get all these things added in the package, <laughs> you're fighting the fight against Senator Joe Manchin, right? Dun, dun, dun. Well, here's what Joe Manchin has to say. Manchin still has a number of concerns uh, in this new article. Namely, the budget gimmicks hide the true cost of the bill, the CBO scoring here. He's pushing to ensure it costs no more than $1.75 trillion in this first half of the bill because everybody knows that there's going to be another stimulus package after this. He is also seeking to pare down the bill, which passed the House last month in November. In a number of other areas, including paid family leave, a methane fee on emissions from energy producers, you know, Joe Manchin and his hands in the pot of uh, the energy industry, and a Medicare expansion to cover hearing costs. And he's seeking changes to some of the provisions in the tax title of the bill, one of the sources said. Quote, he has a lot of concerns, the source said. Asked about his private comments to the senators, Manchin told CNN on Thursday night that the timing of the vote depends on when the Senate parliamentarian rules on what parts of the bill complies with the chamber's strict rules. Quote, debt and inflation are a big concern for me. The West Virginia Democrats said, quote, basically, we should pay for what we're doing which basically they are. I mean, the, the stimulus package is almost paid for. It depends on who you're, who you're talking to. The CBO said that the bill is like 90-some percent paid for. It runs a deficit of about $16 billion a year, which is, in the scheme of things, is very, very small. When you compare that to $16 billion a year, you compare that to the annual defense 
uh, the defense for the country is $750 billion a year. So when you look at running a deficit of $16 billion a year, where we're spending $750 billion for the defense of the country, I mean, it's tiny, right? But when you talk to other Democratic leaders, or um, at least what they say, uh, other Democratic leaders are saying, no, it's fully paid for because the CBO, what they think is that the CBO really vastly underestimated the um, the IRS provisions of what the IRS is going to bring in from the amount of uh, revenue that the new IRS auditing provisions is going to bring in. So um, only time will tell, really, uh, whether or not that'll bring in more or bring in less, because this is kind of a first time thing that this has ever been done, where they're going to hire 80,000 new IRS agents. How much money that will bring in is a guess. It's an estimate. So whether it'll be $16 billion short per year, or it'll actually bring in more than that, and it'll actually be fully paid for and actually have a surplus, we don't know. All we kind of know is it's close. It's close. So you could say it's kind of fully paid for. It's close is probably the best guess if we're not picking sides. If you're not a Democrat, you're not a Republican, you could say it's probably pretty close would be the best way to not partisanly pick is probably the best way to do it. Some of these bills, I mean, ultimately way down the road is probably the best way to only really know. Ultimately, the country is spending trillions of dollars more than the budget does anyways. Honestly, my real take on the budget is we're $28, $29 trillion in debt anyways. Uh, former President Donald Trump spent like $8 trillion in four years. He added to the debt, okay? Um, so if you figure that out, that's about $2 trillion per year that they added to the debt. So that means all the money that the country took in, they spent $2 trillion more than what the country took in on top of that, Okay. Now, you had um, the pandemic there for like the last year. You had those two stimulus packages, those main two stimulus packages. There were some other minor stimulus packages, but they were pretty small. You had the 2017 Trump tax cuts um, in there as well that they passed through reconciliation way back in 2017 that they passed through the reconciliation process. That added like $2 trillion to the deficit as well. So the problem is, is that, and then, you know, Biden is going to add to the deficit as well, too. I mean, they're nowhere near a balanced budget. But realistically, we're going to be over $30 trillion in deficit here soon. And it's just adding to the deficit. Honestly, my, my take is Republicans added to the deficit, Democrats added to the deficit. My true take is, honestly, the deficit will probably never be paid for. Back in 1990-ish, the deficit was like $3 trillion. Now it's almost $30 trillion, okay? In 2050, the deficit will probably be $60 trillion. At some point, it's going to be $100 trillion. It's probably never, ever, ever going to be paid for. So if you ever hear somebody give you the argument that, our, our our kids and our daughters are going to pay for it. That's probably not true. I have a three-year-old son. He's not going to be paying for the debt. Nobody's paying for the debt. Um, nope, nobody's paying for the debt now. If, if, any, if anything, taxes are lower for the average everyday American uh, than they have been in a while. In fact, here's an article to kind of back this up from August of this year. 61% of households owed no federal income taxes last year. After stimulus checks and federal rebates and um, if they got unemployment and after all the rebates and stimulus and everything, that 61% of households actually owed no federal income tax after all the accounting and everything was actually done. So they actually paid zero in federal income taxes when all was said and done. So basically, the bottom 61% of earners paid no federal income tax. So you can't pay less than 0%. So taxes at an all-time low.
So even though the federal deficit is at an all-time high, tax is at actually at an all-time low, at least for the bottom 61%. Now, if you're at the, in the top 1%, that's the people who are actually paying the majority of the taxes. Somebody's paying the taxes, right? They're the ones paying the 37%. Now, if you're in the ultra, ultra, ultra billionaire wealthy, they're the guys who get away with the tax schemes where they have all their money in stocks and they don't sell it and they end up not really paying taxes. So they're the guys that kind of get away with it. That's a, another story, right? Um, the tax code is very, very complicated. Honestly, we could sit here and talk for days and days and days. But the moral of the story is, is that this the federal deficit it's going to be there forever, guys. The, the government just, they spend more money than they take in. <laughs> I even seen some comments uh, yesterday said, we're not in debt. Me and you, the viewers, we're not in debt. The, the Congress, they're the ones spending the money, right? They're the ones spending the money on $750 billion on, on the defense and doing all the, I mean, they're the ones spending the money, right? You and me watching this video, we're not spending the money. We're not the ones spending billions and trillions of dollars, right? We're just average everyday people. We're not the ones that owe $29 trillion, right? Uh, we're not the ones that owe all that money. So uh, you pay that debt because we're not the ones that owe it. Realistically, I don't worry about the national debt per se. I don't think you should lose sleep over it either. Because that, that national debt's just gonna keep growing. And like I said, in 1990-ish, it was three trillion. Now it's almost 30 trillion. And yet 61% of people didn't pay any federal income tax last year. So I don't really buy into the thought of, oh, our kids are gonna have to pay it back and we're gonna be burdened with debt. Because I, I just don't really buy into it. I just don't think we're ever gonna pay it back. You know? And honestly, we're not the only country that debt runs like this. Um, the vast majority of countries in the world run like this. Remember, we print our own money. So they're just going to keep print. You know, there's that famous picture of uh, Jerome Powell with the print in the money machine. They're just going to keep printing the money machine. It's just the way the world is. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'll keep you up to date here with everything. Uh, I think the most important thing is that they help people in their time of need right now. We're dealing with a pandemic. We're dealing with a pandemic and the economy as well. And the economy needs help or else we go back to the Great Depression. And um, when the Great Depression, they didn't have stimulus. They didn't have unemployment. They didn't have um, all these packages that they have now. And the reason they do this stuff, the reason they have Social Security, the reason they have stimulus packages, the reason they have unemployment, the reason they have all these social safety nets now is to prevent the Great Depression from happening again. And Republicans and Democrats do this. Remember, Trump was president last year and Republicans were in control of the Senate and they passed the first two stimulus checks and the first two stimulus packages. Now Democrats are in control and they passed the third stimulus package. So both parties passed this stuff, right? And they realize this, they have to do this to prevent us from going into a Great Depression. So you can't really blame one party or the other. They both realize that we're in a pandemic. They have to help people and the economy to prevent us from having that stuff happen again. Makes sense. So I'll keep you up to date with here with everything. Let me know your thoughts here down in the comments. Make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't yet. New videos come out here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can click here to watch my newest video next. This top video is how you can apply for rent assistance. You can get your rent paid for up to 12 months. Uh, and it's money available right now from the third stimulus package. And this bottom video is how you can apply for utility assistance. You can get $500 to $1,500 available from utility assistance as well. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks, guys. And I will see you in the next video.